So another cold, wet, and rainy, and snowy day here in March. But we've been working on the farm, getting this new sterilizer in, into production. So I'm going to go over all the details on this design and kind of give you an idea of where we're headed with this and how I think this is going to work. That's coming up next. All right guys, really exciting day here on the farm. We have a new sterilization design that I've been working on and I'm gonna be tweaking this for the entire year. I'm looking to get three of these tanks into production. What we just found out is that this tank, it can hold 120 bags or so. So it's about four times the capacity of our current tanks right now. Each of these tanks hold about 35 bags each and just for the sake of this video we're talking about our wood chip bags if we're doing sawdust or masters mix bags we can fit a lot more in these tanks but four times the amount is going to be able to go in these tanks these are going to be mobile so we're able to detach these you guys can see here so we've rigged up some hose barbs and they're connected to this food grade hose that the steam is passing through and I've just done a pipe insulation. We have a union connection that goes to the header of the steam pipe and then I just have this boiler heating up right now. So I have one boiler for this entire tank and just to put it into context I can have one boiler on for four of my tanks and it's fine. So some of, some of the assumptions that that we're making here is that when we have seven of these tanks hooked up and that's seven steam pipes the the steam the 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 usefulness of the steam and the amount of pressure that these boilers push that steam through the pipes dissipates with seven tanks and if we were to hook up more tanks it's it's going to uh, take a long time for these units to heat up and they're not they're not being they're not using the steam as effectively as they could be so with this new design we have a steam coil in the bottom of the tank it has 12 holes and to put that in perspective each of these tanks have eight holes in their steam coil so we're gonna have at max I think three tanks but we're going to be able to increase our, the yield quite a bit on our farm so three of these tanks in rotation when we're doing wood chips that's going to be 360 bags compared to 245 and not only that we're able to detach these from our system let them cool down somewhere else in our farm and then the next day we can hook up more of these tanks and do production every day now doing production every day is important to understand why this is beneficial for my farm we, we're not a big farm we have one full-time staff myself we have students i'm gonna have t another full-time guy this at some point this year and to be able to do you know a thousand or two thousand bags in one shot and have a big a big steam tank like a big steam container or something like that i need a lot of labor to do that i need a lot of processing equipment to do that i'll need like some kind of auto bagger possibly a hopper that is going to auger in uh, with a foot pedal and feed our bags we, we don't have that equipment. So the solution is, is doing a lot of production spread out, but, but doing it every day, or at least doing a volume that is, is going to give us what we need for our business. So we're looking to do one greenhouse worth of production in about three days. So with this new design, all we have to do is sterilize Three, three days in a row with our new tanks and we're going to be able to fill one greenhouse because we're going to have all of that production sterilized brought into our lab and inoculated at the same time and then they're going to grow out and we're going to be able to fill our greenhouses faster whereas right now our production is spread out over 10 days and then we inoculate and then it takes us about 10 days to fill a greenhouse so we're really only getting about two to two and a half greenhouses in production every month 
and that's only about I want to say 1200 to 1600 pounds of mushrooms a month right now so this is a really awesome strategy for us to to make our months more profitable but it's also going to improve the efficiency on our farm because we're going to detach these tanks and we're going to let them cool down and then they're going to roll right into our new lab and we're not going to be unloading them here in the production area anymore we're going to just be loading the tanks into the new lab and then we're going to be unloading from the sterilizer onto our laminar flow hood workbench inoculate the bags and then they're going to be put on mobile shelves and then they're going to get moved to the incubation room so this whole year we're, work we're working on efficiency and we're trying to come up with the idea of, of how to do that so this is still very much a prototype design i'm i've i've sourced out some concrete board that i've cut and we have that all around the side of the the unit and we're trying to use concrete as insulation to kind of retain the heat and then i've wrapped a tarp around it just to kind of keep it all together and then there's a ratchet strap just to keep that all together and this this design might change over time there's uh, there's i can't remember i was talking with one of my students it's a uh, type of uh, foam styrofoam foam board that we were talking about i just can't remember the name of it right now but i'll put the word right across the screen i'll look it up we're considering uh, doing those as panels that might be a better way to do it the thing i don't like about the concrete panels is it uh, breaks apart and it's fragile we had one of these panels fall and it already just kind of crumbled so i think long-term use these panels might not be the best solution for us and just thinking like how much they're gonna get moved around the farm you know with students or my employees not being careful they're probably gonna break one of those sheets is about a hundred or fifty dollars for a sheet it's an eight foot eight by four foot sheet and it's fifty dollars and we need two of those for this tank so this is a hundred dollars uh, experimental insulation for this but when we figure this out We'll, we'll kind of move ahead with what works but this is this is what we're doing right now now the way this tank's going to work is i've sourced out these these probes here this is a k-type probe a uh, thermal couple i'll leave a link in the uh, show notes below if you guys want to check that out on amazon these are the best ones that i i found they're stainless and they're pretty good price so i, I picked up a bunch of these and these hook up to just a reader we have a digital thermometer right here and then we have this probe in the center of the tank and this is how we're going to calibrate this system and we're not steaming out the lids anymore we're actually steaming out the drain hole so we just have a drain right here and that's just going to continuously drain water but that's also where the steam is going to go eventually and it might it might kind of seep out the cracks of the lid as well we're looking to probably do these rope gaskets that we have on our old tanks and we're going to put that on the on the tank and then put the lid on top but for for this trial i wasn't able to get any of the gasket in so we've just put the lid on and then the weight of the concrete board on the top of the lid is holding everything down so realistically we're going to get steam kind of going everywhere for this trial and it's not going to matter but when you hook up tanks in series like this you know insulation matters and making sure you don't have too many steam leaks matter because that's how you get these systems to stabilize and all work at the same time you want everything to to hit 100 celsius or 212 fahrenheit so that you can effectively sterilize your substrate so for this trial it's not going to matter but that's something that we're just considering right now and i don't know how long it's going to take to heat up you know that's that's another thing i'm going to have to figure out we started these boilers at 11 o'clock this morning it's really cold outside right now we're just coming up to four o'clock i believe boilers are pumping up steam this uh this steam pipe is actually really loose it's got steam in it right now so this this whole unit here is filling up with steam and then once this digital thermometer here once that reads about 80 fahrenheit it's going to be 12 hours for sterilization that's what we do with wood chips i've uh, in the past i've waited until it hits about 93 celsius 
which is about 200 Fahrenheit. And I'm starting to realize that for our wood chip bags, it only has 20% supplementation and the wood chip bags are not uh, as dense as sawdust. So we can actually achieve full sterilization if we do 12 hours when the center bag of this tank is around 70 to 80 Celsius and whatever that is in Fahrenheit, I just don't have the information right now. So that's how you calibrate this and obviously this tank is four times as dense as these barrels so it's going to take a lot longer to heat up and we calibrate the system with these probes. So I'll keep you guys posted in another video. There's a chance I'm going to be up all night kind of figuring this out and that's really just what it is to be an entrepreneur. You need to sometimes just kind of sacrifice sleep and tweak everything and figure out how your system is working and then and then go from there. So I'm, I'm always willing to do that and I think I think moving forward this design is going to really work well for us and as soon as I'm happy with this I'm going to get two more tanks made right away and then we're going to run with this this year. We're still going to be using our old barrels but the thing is is they they will become obsolete as this generates more money for us. Just just by doing more production with these tanks, we're looking at doing at least an extra $6,000 a month in sales. And with that money, then we can just keep buying more tanks. And ultimately for my farm, I think I'd like to see 12 of these tanks kind of in rotation. And we're doing probably anywhere between two and three tanks per day to get the cycles that we want in our greenhouses. So anyways, guys, I hope this helped. This is, uh, this is kind of what farming is all about. It's always about tinkering and kind of figuring stuff out. And I have a lot of, ex a lot of experience with my existing sterilizer and figuring that out. So I, I've done the best guess I could to hopefully have a very successful trial. I had uh, AJ and Clay, they were bagging wood chips on the farm for me today while I was working on this. So thank you guys for doing that. And you know, we didn't even know how many bags would fit in here. So now we got this filled. There's three rows and it fits perfectly. I'm, I'm really happy with, with everything with this tank right now. So no, right now I just need to make sure that the plastic doesn't melt and it shouldn't, it's polypropylene. And then we need to make sure that we can maintain, maintain temperatures, make sure that the, the steam leak in the lid is not gonna be a big deal. Possibly the steam gasket that I've ordered is not necessary and this is what we're gonna do. And moving forward probably come up with a insulation that is not as brittle as this concrete board although I really like it uh, we might even frame in the concrete board with some 2x4 or something like that or maybe some plywood and make it more sturdy there's a lot of options for us available so anyways guys hope you found this helpful we'll see you in the next video